Hi, I'm Julie. I'm a music teacher currently teaching piano and voice in a studio setting. My goal in creating these videos is to give my students additional musical instruction outside of their lessons, essentially bringing me with them into their practice sessions at home. If you're joining me for the first time, make sure to check out the last piano practice where I revealed the one song every pianist ought to know. Today's practice might seem a little odd because we're not even sitting at a piano. But before you write it off as unimportant, hear me out and ask yourself this question. Do I need to stretch before playing the piano? I'm gonna answer that question with a question. In playing the piano, are you asking your body to do things it doesn't generally do all day long? In playing the piano, your arms, wrists, hands and fingers and your elbows are moving in ways that it doesn't naturally do throughout the course of a normal day. If you want to ward off pain, discomfort, and fatigue, I believe the answer to both of these questions is yes. Yes, you do need to stretch before playing the piano. And yes, in playing the piano, you are asking your body to do abnormal movements. So I'm not a physical therapist. I'm not a personal trainer, and I'm definitely not a doctor. I'm a pianist just like you. So I turn to those who are educated in these fields for ideas, tips, and suggestions to make my piano practicing and piano playing as comfortable as possible. I would like to share with you the stretches that I have found to be the most effective and helpful for me as I prepare to play the piano. These ideas are from Fitness Blender with Daniel and Kelly Seegers. So we're gonna start with stretches at our neck. All of the stretches that we're gonna be doing today are gonna to help to release some tension. Most of us have a job where we spend a lot of time seated and chances are we're probably seated, sitting with poor posture, which of course is going to put extra tension into these areas. You're gonna find a lot of tension in our necks and shoulders, so that's where we're gonna focus for a while. All of these stretches are gonna be fluid. We're not holding any of them for an, a long period of time. Before you get ready to do something athletic, and yes, I think playing the piano is athletic, um, you don't want to hold a stretch for an extended period of time. It is possible to overstretch uh, before playing, so we wanna keep our movements fluid. The first one is just looking from shoulder to shoulder. So you're gonna start by just looking to one side, hold it for a moment, and then look to the other shoulder. Pretty basic, not too challenging. Hold it for a moment, and then let it release, and move to the other side. Now you're not trying to push your range of motion here, because pushing implies stress, and we're trying to get rid of stress and tension. You're just holding it for a moment before you release that and move to the other side. Our next one also involves shoulder to shoulder. Instead of looking, you're gonna lean. So lean to one shoulder, hold that for a moment, and then slowly move to the other shoulder. Lean, hold, and move. Very fluid, not very fast. You'd get dizzy, or at least I would get dizzy moving very fast. Just looking, just leaning from shoulder to shoulder. One more of these and we'll move on to our next one. All right, our next one, we are going to roll our neck from shoulder to shoulder. So starting on the one side, let's start with a lean and then look down to the floor and roll to the other shoulder. When you get there, go back down to the floor and back to the other shoulder. You will notice that I'm not rolling my neck back I'm just going from shoulder down to the floor and back to the other shoulder. Let's do one more of these and bring your head back up. Okay, we've spent three uh, stretches on our neck. Now we're gonna actually move to our shoulders. Another place that we hold a lot of tension due to posture, due to sitting, due to looking at phones, working on computers, etc. all day would be our shoulders. So we're gonna roll our shoulders. Start with your arms relaxed at your sides and you're gonna bring your shoulders up to your ears, push them back behind you and back down. And then do it again, drawing very large circles with your shoulders. You might feel some popping 
in your shoulders with this movement, as long as there's no pain or discomfort associated with those pops, you're probably good to go. And let's do a couple more of these. And then we're gonna switch directions and roll our shoulders forward. So stretch directions back behind you, up toward your ears and in front of you. Just drawing giant circles as far as your range of motion allows you to. All right, let's move this movement bigger and we're gonna incorporate our arms into the movement. So let's start by drawing a big circle with our arm, just one at a time, a nice big circle. You're not going for speed here, you're just going for range of motion and movement. Let's do one more with just this arm and switch to the other side. Switch arms. While you do this, you're keeping your hips facing forward. You're not moving to the side because that does not give you extra range of motion. That just changes your movement. All right, and then let's go back to the uh, uh, arm we started on and move our movement backward behind you, drawing giant circles with your arms, arm behind you, and switch to this arm behind you. Large fluid movements. Okay, let's put both of them together, both behind you and one in front of you. Fabulous. All right, let's move to our chest and upper back. We're gonna do a, a stretch that's gonna stretch out our back and then the exact opposite to stretch out our chest. So we're gonna lean forward, you're kind of like creating, um, you're concaving your chest basically and pulling forward. Just a slight pull. You should feel it opening and stretching your back and then go the opposite direction, sticking your chest out. You can even um, flex your wrists back behind you and then back to the front and then back behind you. And once again, your movement is very fluid. You're not holding either of these stretches for very long, just a second or two, and then moving to the opposite side, the opposite stretch. Let's do one more of those. And behind you. And if any of these are uncomfortable to you, just skip that stretch or do a stretch that is comfortable for you until I move on to the next one. All right, um, the next one we can do is we can just swing our arms, one over top of the other, in front of you, behind you. It's just stretching things, opening things up, getting blood flowing, circulation, moving, something we probably haven't done for the majority of our day. And last one. All right, let's move on to our wrists. So we use our wrists a lot in piano playing, whether you realize it or not. And unfortunately, we also store a lot of tension in our wrists. You probably know someone who has struggled with carpal tunnel. Um, and that might be because they play the piano. It might be because they type on a computer all day. Um, but a, a lot of tension is in, involved in our wrists. So the first one we're going to do is you're going to put your arms in front of you with your palms out, like you're telling someone to stop. So there's the side version. And your fingers are pulling you're pulling your fingers back toward you. Hold that for a moment and then put it behind you and pull your fingers up behind you in the exact opposite motion. So arms in front of you, fingers pulling back toward you like you're telling someone to stop and then behind you, pulling your fingers in toward your palms. And again, it's a fluid movement. You're not holding either of these stretches for very long. Couple more of these. And last one. All right, the next one is gonna be a wrist roll. And you can do this at your sides. I'm gonna do it in front of me. I put my um, arms out in front of me, my wrist, my palms facing forward, and I'm just rolling them one direction, flipping them up, and rolling them the other direction. And again, you're not doing anything that makes you feel pain or discomfort because that's not our purpose in stretching. Our purpose is relieving tension, preparing and waking up our muscles to do work. 
cyst muscles we don't generally use. Let's do one more of those. Great. All right, the last one. Um, this one I do very briefly before I play, but I honestly do more, I do this one a lot longer after I play. So, so far all of our movements have been very fluid. We haven't been holding anything for very long. For this last exercise, when I'm doing it after I play, I will hold the stretch for 30 seconds to 45 seconds, maybe even a minute. Um, and you'll notice, uh, you'll notice the impact when you're done playing on this one. This stretch is for before we play, so we're only gonna hold it for a couple seconds. You're gonna put your arm out in front of you with your palm facing the ceiling. And then you're gonna take your other hand and gently pull your fingers toward your wrist, toward the back of your hand, toward your forearm. And release. And again, and you're just gently pulling. And release. And this time, incorporate pulling your thumb back with it. Now for me, this, this stretch is one of my favorites when I'm done playing. And I will definitely stretch it and hold it for a lot longer than I would before I play. All right, let's switch to the other hand. So starting again with just your fingers first. And release. Do a couple times where you're just pulling your fingers back. And then go ahead and include the thumb in that stretch. And a couple more of those. Now we're gonna do the exact opposite movement to it. Instead of pulling it this way, we're pulling them this way. So my hand is, my palm is facing the ground and my wrist is <clears throat> uh, pulled forward. And again, only hold it for a couple seconds before releasing it. A couple seconds and release. And switch arms, hands, wrists, whatever, sides. Other side, a couple seconds and release. And a couple seconds and release. And one more. And there you have it. So we spent a little time on our neck. We went to our shoulders, to our chest and our back, and then we ended our focus on our wrists. Now you're ready to run a 5K on the piano or do a hand and exercise. So remember why you're doing this because you love playing the piano. Incorporate this quick stretching routine into your piano practice so you can continue to love playing the piano for years to come. Oh, and by the way, these stretches aren't just good for playing the piano. They actually help reduce stress and tension in general. And who doesn't need that? Thanks for taking the time to practice with me. Remember to subscribe, click the bell icon to receive notification when new content is available. Leave a comment, or like this video if you felt this information was helpful. Now go, play skillfully with a loud noise.